Laura was hurrying down the street to try to keep the rain from reaching her. It was an important day for her, and she had planned her schedule carefully. She knew that 7 o'clock in the morning was early enough to find an open salon, but she desperately needed to start with a change in her appearance so she could face that day with a good face. Fortunately, she lived in an area with lots of shops, and a couple of days ago she noticed that they had recently opened a shiny new hair salon. The interior was decorated with studio lights and an elegant background, the high and padded chairs gave a feeling of comfort and had touch screens where you could see an advertising video where a woman received a hair massage while washing her hair. She wasn't sure if she would find it, but she decided to take a chance since she needed special treatment and the place looked promising. When she arrived, she saw that they were just opening the premises. Somewhat unsure, she approached one of the employees who were fixing the premises for a new day at work. Excuse me, dear, is the place open? Laura didn't know if it was because she was too early or if the woman had a particular problem, but her tone was monotonous and her response was curt. You just came in, ma'am. Tell me, what do you need? Laura did not trust the woman's tone, which she answered without even looking at her, but she wanted to finish that activity early in the morning so she could continue with her agenda. So she pulled out a clipping from an old magazine where she was posing a lovely model from the 70s. I would like this style, but in a natural color. The hairdresser took the photo disdainfully, and she couldn't help but laugh. Oh, ma'am, don't ask me for the impossible. Your hair is long, but it's too fine for your age. If I tried to dye it and give it those waves, you're going to get out of here bald. Other hairdressers who were also fixing up the workstation came over to see the photo and didn't hold back their laughter from her either. One of them said, Well, ma'am, this hairstyle will have looked good on you in your time, but if you do it now, your boyfriend's going to be scared. You're going to look very old-fashioned. Laura tried not to unsettle her scathing and hurtful comments, but it was very difficult when a trio of women laughed at a cherished memory of hers. She tried to answer them something, but at the moment one of the hairdressers said to her in a tone that seemed very conciliatory, Come on, ma'am, the 70s are over. Why are you encouraging us to try something new? They're plating their hair, but you already have it naturally. Take advantage of that. Although the woman's tone seemed to be kind, there was something in her words that she seemed to mock her. So, without waiting another minute, she took the photo of her haircut and left, but not before hearing how the hairdressers continued to giggle. Fearing that she would have to suspend her makeover project, Laura walked through the stores that were already open, hoping to find an open hair salon. She was about to give up when she saw something that resembled a hair salon. On the outside, it had a house-like facade peeling off the sides. It seemed that someone tried to clean the windows without much success, and it also taped old photos with samples of haircuts. As she got a little closer, she could guess the shapes of an old barber chain, and in front of it, a square frameless mirror and a simple plastic instrument table. The look of the place was not the best, but Laura didn't have many options. She entered the room and immediately smelled the pleasant smell of fresh coffee. Good morning, is it open? Immediately, a female voice answered her from inside a room, which had for its door a simple, faded curtain. Yes, good morning, I'll take care of you. A hand parted the curtain, revealing a smiling young woman in her thirties wearing a simple, stylish uniform. Tell me, how can I help you? She replied in a pleasant voice. Laura hesitated for a moment when she saw the simplicity of the facilities, which barely had three hairdressing stations, two manicure stations, and a humble tub with a hose that served as a head wash. However, she didn't have much of a choice, and she really wanted to do that makeover. A little annoyed by the treatment she'd received at her previous hairdresser, she took from her bag the photo with their 70s hairstyle and handed it to the young woman. I would like to know if it's possible for me to get this cut, but I wish it in a natural tone. The hairdresser took the photo and smiled sweetly before answering, Sure you do. No problem. Would you like a cup of coffee? It's fresh. Surprised by the woman's response, Laura accepted her kind invitation. While Laura was enjoying her coffee, the hairdresser asked her as she arranged the utensils for her hair, What shade would you like for the dye? Laura answered, a little unsure, Well, my natural tone was brown, but there was a time when I dyed myself black, and I really liked how it turned out, although now that I'm so old, I don't know if it suits me. Well, the hairdresser replied, I honestly think you would look good in whatever shade you wear. You have an enviable complexion, and you don't look that older. If you like black, we can give it a try. Laura was delighted with the treatment the young woman was giving her. A small radio broadcast the songs and jokes of a morning show, but Laura was curious about the little battered but cozy business she was in. 
So she started a conversation with the young hairdresser. And you run this hair salon alone? The young woman, still concentrating on her work, replied, Oh, it wouldn't be too much for me, but to tell the truth, right now I'm afraid I am. The three employees I had moved to another hairdresser, the new one on the corner. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a very fancy one that's taking it out and around the street. Laura couldn't help but pout when she found out about that, and without a hint of dissimulation, she said, Well, if they're the rude ones who attended me earlier, let me tell you that they've done you a great favor, my dear. They scared off the clients. The young woman giggled sadly as she said, Yes, many people told me, but I really believe in their abilities. They studied in very expensive aesthetic institutes and are very good at their job, but in the end they were only interested in a better salary and more beautiful workplace. Well, my dear, they've still done you a great favor. You don't want to be around those kind of people, much less work with them. The conversation unfolded as they grew more confident. The young woman told her that her name was Alejandra and that this hairdresser was actually the lower part of her house. She made modifications to the upper part, but the truth was that she'd been left without a room or hall. She was an only child, and she'd cared for her mother until her cancer had taken her away when she was 26 years old. She'd been very close to her mother, and when she died, she felt very lonely. But she decided to study aesthetics at a work institute. In part, she'd done it because when her mother began to lose her hair, Alejandra wanted to make her pretty cuts, but they always ended in disaster. Until, finally, there was no alternative but to shave her head. She also did it to meet people and make friends, as well as to generate income. However, she realized that although working for someone else was entertaining and an easy income, she was also very tiring, having to be accountable to other people. So one day she began to make arrangements at her house and to buy chairs and other implements that she needed. Finally, the year before, she achieved her goal of having her own business, and she named it after her mother, Isabel. Everything was developing more or less well, until about two months ago, the new hairdresser on the corner opened and its employees abandoned her, claiming that in the world of styling that was the most normal thing and that if she wanted to have a constant income, the best thing would be for you to close your business and look for a job in a strong, modern hair salon. And here I am, said Alejandra, looking for good hairdressers who want to work with me, but it's more difficult than I thought. Oh dear, replied Laura, I would very much like to help you, but I'm afraid I have no idea how to do it. Don't worry, Miss Laura. If you speak well of me to your acquaintances and friends, it's more than enough. There was a small silence while Alejandra finished putting on the protective cap so that the dye would have the effect on her. After a minute, Alejandra asked her, Would you like a manicure? It's early and there are no more clients. Oh, I would love it very much, my dear. Thank you so much. While Alejandra tuned the manicure implements, she asked the kind old woman about her life. Laura told her that she was trying to celebrate her wedding anniversary that day for the first time in ten years. Laura had not celebrated that date for ten years because that same day her husband had died of kidney failure. Laura had met her husband at nineteen years old. They were both very young at the time, but they were having fun like no other. Laura was a polyglot and had many jobs in different embassies, for which she also enjoyed countless trips, many of them with her husband, and then years later in the company of her children. However, entering adulthood, she decided to resign her positions in the embassies and teach language in different institutes, since her children had good jobs and they spent a decent amount of money to live with her. Her pleasures in her life were limited to teaching and spending weekends and some days in the company of her children and her grandchildren. When her husband fell ill, part of her joy went with him. She was no longer the carefree and cheerful woman that she used to be. Now she was much more cautious and she thought twice before making a decision. Seeing herself alone without her life partner was a very hard blow that she had to assimilate quickly, being even worse that the date of her husband's death was the same of that her anniversary. That's why she'd prepared her schedule for that day so well. She had planned to make her makeover to the hairstyles she used to wear when she met her husband. Later, she would visit his remains in the cemetery to finally enjoy a dinner prepared by her children. She'd gone throughout the very bitter duel having to face the reality that her husband would not be with her to accompany her in her old age. Still, she comforted him, knowing that once she left this world, the eternal smile of her husband would be waiting for her. Wow, Alejandra said with an expression of real surprise. That's really sad. But think that when you enjoy good times, he's also enjoying being with you. Or at least, that's what I imagine with my mother. I know, dear, I know, said the old lady. I think about it daily, too. But for many years, I couldn't face those days without a tremendous emptiness in my heart. I know you understand me, too. Time passed quickly. And soon the skilled young woman had finished. 
The old woman was beyond emotion. Her hair once again exhibited the shine and style that had characterized it during her youth. Little tears rolled down her cheeks as she said to Alejandra, Heavens, dear, you really have given a gift like no other in a long time. You've allowed me a glimpse of my best years. Don't worry, ma'am, she answered her with a slight shrug of her shoulders. I'm pleased that you like it. If you have acquaintances interested in a makeover, please do not hesitate to recommend me. The old woman said goodbye to the friendly hairdresser and went to the cemetery. There she spent a long time remembering her husband in her best days while she spoke to him. After her visit was over, after crying for a while, she went to the bathrooms to wash her face. As she left her, a sweet voice called her from the hall. Professor Laura. Turning around, the old woman saw that it was one of her students. Oh my, Rita, what a surprise to find you. What are you doing here, dear? Well, I was finishing some legal paperwork with some parcels. Do you understand, thinking ahead? Yes, sure, I understand, dear. A small silence formed between the women before Rita broke it to ask, Are you hungry, teacher? I'd like to take you to lunch, and then if you have time, I'd like to take you out for coffee. Certainly, Laura lasted much less than expected in the cemetery, and since dinner with her children would be the night, she was already beginning to get hungry. Also, she had always had a very pretty relationship with Rita and was glad to catch up with her. I would love to, dear. Come on. Lunch was entertaining, and the women got up to date on the news of their lives. Suddenly, Rita asked her former instructor, Professor, were you recently at the hairdresser? That's right, my dear. I was there this morning. Why, does it look very old-fashioned? The old woman asked, running her hands through her hair, a little sorry, remembering the scathing teasing that those rude hairdressers had made that morning. Oh, no, nothing like that, she hastened to say to the young woman. You look great, teacher. Actually, I wanted to ask you which salon you attended because, as I mentioned, I'm having problems with my staff and I'm thinking of hiring new stylists. Well, I must say that the young woman who attended me is excellent in her work, but I'm afraid you will not be able to hire her since she has her own business. Very humble, but she's truly charming. Wow, what a pity. You really can see that she has an impeccable technique to apply dye to such fine hair and also give it those natural waves. The women finished their after meal and walked very close to the area where Laura lived. The old woman was curious. My dear, is your business close to here? Oh, yeah, very close, she answered the woman as she parked in a street parking lot. They got out of her car and started walking towards a familiar corner. Laura could hardly contain her shock when she realized that her former student's business was that disastrous hairdresser where she'd been treated so badly that morning. Still, she composed her expression the best she could and entered the premises. The hairdressers greeted her boss effusively as she introduced them to her former teacher. This incredible and elegant lady is my old French and Portuguese teacher. She helped me master the languages that I always wanted to speak and that have opened many doors for me. And today I wanted to bring her to see my new place and for you to detail the techniques used by the stylist who treated her this morning. Rita was sure that she had used a kind and enthusiastic tone when she introduced her teacher, so she did not understand why three of her hairdressers were looking at Laura with uncomfortable expressions. Something happened? she asked. Well, my dear, I'm afraid your personnel problems are real and very serious. I'm sorry to tell you that this morning I walked into your business, but the people in charge of serving customers at the time were the most rude and inappropriate. They scoffed at my request and my appearance, and not satisfied with that, they also amused by my indignation when I left the place. A deathly silence fell in place. Rita asked her former teacher to please excuse her on behalf of her staff and offered to drive her in her home. Since there was nothing else a hairdresser could offer her, before she left, she said in a warning tone, when I arrive, I don't want to see anyone from the opening shift. They're fired here. Then we agreed by phone to agree on their settlement amount. And without another word, she closed the door. Laura disliked that dismissal, but she knew it was the right thing to do. However, she wanted to try and fix the day for her student somehow. Rita, would you like to meet a great hairdresser? Her student began to follow her through the shopping streets with so much intrigue until she reached the humble house where Alejandra was waiting for a client. Months later, Laura stopped by Alejandra's house. The girl did not stop thanking her for the opportunity that she'd given her because she now had more clients than ever in the small branch that she'd built with Rita's help. What did you think of the story? Do you think there are coincidences or casualties? Leave us your answer in the comment box. Thanks for visiting us. If you liked the video, please like it and share it with your friends. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.